Before I comment on today's uh, readings, I just wanted to mention that this Friday we are having an online March for Life event. It's not really a march, but it's a, a pro-life uh, e event uh, organized by the Knights of Columbus, by the uh, Bishop Greco Assembly of the Fourth Degree Knights. And they regularly meet at our parish or used to before the pandemic. So they are organizing this event and it will entail various prayers, reflections, uh, pro-life rosary, as well as a pro-life litany. And I will be participating in this event. So you can find the information on our parish website, as well as the uh, Zoom link or, or whatever uh, format they are using for this virtual event. So that's this Friday, tomorrow at 7 p.m. So if you're able to join in, great. In regards to today's reading, our Lord spoke these words just before he's to undergo his passion. It's kind of, you know, his, his, his um, Last Supper discourse is, is quite lengthy. It's, it's quite a lot of chapters in the Gospel of John. But one of the things that he really emphasized was the unity of his followers. Father, may they be one as you and I are one. And this unity of, of believers is extremely important. And, you know, there's that passage where our Lord points out that a kingdom divided against itself cannot stand. Now, even though there's been so many divisions within Christianity, Christianity will always stand. There will always be a, a remnant of, of true believers, but it's really Satan who seeks to divide because he knows that when we are divided, we are not as effective in promoting the kingdom of God here on earth. We are not as effective in opposing evils in society. And also when we are divided, often those divisions cause inner conflicts. And so a lot of our energy is taken up, a lot of our time and energy is taken up in kind of arguing against each other or battling against each other instead of doing what we're supposed to be doing, which is to make the kingdom of God present here on earth and also to accomplish our own personal sanctification and holiness. So it, it's important to, to be reminded of this fact and to, to seek what our Lord truly wants. And, you know, we're rem reminded every day when we pray the Our Father, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. So God's will is that we sanctify ourselves and make his kingdom present here on earth. And if we pray the Our Father, we should really desire to do that. Now, here's another interesting thing that, you know, during this pandemic, a lot of people are isolated. Um, some people live by themselves and it can be extremely difficult. But even, you know, especially for young people, they're, they're saying that young people are finding it very challenging because young people, they need to socialize. They need to interact with their peers. And sure, they have social media and all these things. But to be in the presence of others, it, it per, to personally inter interact is very, very important. And as you know, young people are often ambitious. They have their whole lives ahead of them. They have specific goals they wish to accomplish. The problem is that when you're locked down, when you're isolated for long periods of time, it's kind of like, what goals are you going to have? What, what can you do? What can you accomplish? And you become bored and boredom can lead to depression. So we need to have kind of important goals that we strive for. And unfortunately, a lot of young people don't realize that what part of what they should be striving for is to get to know Christ, to get to know their scripture, to, to grow in their life of prayer, to practice self-discipline, maybe even take up a hobby. So young people don't think about these things. They need to be told these things. And, and parents, I think, need to guide them in the ways of faith and you know do things together as a family if they can so that young people don't feel totally bored and useless. The problem is that when we don't have good goals or ambitions, we often come up with worldly goals or ambitions or goals and ambitions that are not good, that are not Christian, that perhaps are even evil. And this draws me to today's first reading from uh, the Acts of the Apostles. So notice that, that Paul is, is brought before the 
the, the Jewish leaders, the Sadducees and the Pharisees, and they are intent on killing Paul. So Paul is actually arrested by, um, by, by the, the, uh, the leader, I, I can't remember, the tribune. He's actually arrested to protect Paul. So, and then he, he, he calls this council of the Jewish leaders and, and presents Paul to them. And so Paul notices that some are Sadducees, some are Pharisees. Now note that they are both united in wanting to bring about the downfall of St. Paul to bring about his actual death. They want to get rid of St. Paul. Why? Well, he kind of opposes their beliefs, um, but he's also changing the Jewish tradition or appears to be changing the Jewish tradition. Now, when, when we think of Christ, he didn't start a new religion. So Christianity is really the fulfillment, the perfection of the Jewish faith and, and the fulfillment of it. So uh, St. Paul wasn't changing the religion, but many of the uh, adherents of Judaism were becoming Christians. And of course, the Jewish leaders did not like that. So they wanted to get rid of, of St. Paul. But when St. Paul notices that the, some are Sadducees, some are Pharisees, he's reminded of the fact that they have different beliefs, essential beliefs. So the Sadducees did not believe in angels or spirits or the resurrection. In other words, they don't believe in life after death. And so St. Paul reminds the, the cohort, the, the group of them, that, you know, he's, he's a Pharisee himself, and he had studied un, under Pharisees, and, and he believes in the resurrection. So what's so wrong about what he's preaching? In other words, he's preaching the resurrection of Christ, and he's preaching the resurrection of, of everyone at the end of time. And this actually causes a division amongst the the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they start arguing amongst themselves. So what St. Paul did was actually remind them of the purpose of their beliefs. In other words, if you have religious beliefs, then that should be your main focus to live out those beliefs and ideally to spread those beliefs to others. So St. Paul is reminding them, okay, if these are your beliefs, oh, well, then they realize, okay, now we got to defend ourselves or we have to try to convince the, the other group that this is what it's all about. So in some way, it was good that they started arguing, but of course, it, it brought about a division. So divisions are not good, but at least they had the right focus, their religious focus. And this is what we need to have when it comes to our faith. We need to be focused on our faith. That is the most important thing in our lives. Because if we're not focused on that, if that is not our goal or objective, then we come up with other objectives or goals that are not good and perhaps even evil. This is exactly what happened to the Sadducees and the Pharisees. They are intent on killing a man, a man who's innocent, a man who's simply expressing his beliefs in Jesus Christ. And they intend to, to drag him down. They intend to kill him. This is evil. So the unfortunate thing is that sometimes Christians too have done the very same thing and continue to do so even to, to this day. You know, it wasn't that long ago that, you know, Christians or Catholics and, and Protestants were, you know, butting heads and, and killing each other. And it's very, very unfortunate. Now notice in today's gospel reading how our Lord says, you know, as I am in the Father, you know, may we be in them and they in us. Well, what is he talking about? You know, when we think of God, God is pure spirit. So it makes sense that the son is in the father and the father is in the son. But really what our Lord is getting at is that when we have the mind of God, we are in God and God is in us. We have God's spirit within us. So we need to have the mind of God. In fact, there's a passage where St. Paul says, you know, put on the mind of Christ. So how do we put on the mind of Christ? We have to know what Christ is all about. We have to meditate on scripture. But it's not just the mind of Christ, the heart of Christ. And this is where the Holy Spirit comes in because the Holy Spirit enables us to love as we are called to love. So when we put on the mind of Christ, when we have the heart of Christ, the mind of God, the, the heart of God, then we will what God wills. We, we strive to accomplish the goals that God has for us as individuals, our own personal sanctification and holiness. 
but also we strive to bring about the kingdom of God here on earth. In other words, we have a clear objective, a clear goal, a clear ambition, something to strive for, whether we are locked down in a pandemic or not. 